The Pistons have the fifth overall pick in the 2022 NBA draft, and all I keep hearing is fit doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It does matter. Like there has to be a little bit of consideration on fit here. And I want you to hang on with me while I tell you what that means. Now, do I think fit matters when it comes to drafting a guy like Jalen Duran uh, out of Memphis? And it's like, well, he's not going to fit next to Isaiah Stewart. No, it doesn't matter because Jalen Duran has the potential to be a top 10 center in this league and could be just a defensive and rebounding beast. Okay, so yes, fit doesn't matter in that situation. Where does fit matter? It matters with Cade Cunningham. That is where fit matters. So talent matters more. Fit also matters. And that's my, kind of what I want to say in this video. That's my main point is you need to have a guy that can play next to Cade Cunningham. But besides that, let's talk about fit. Does it matter beyond fitting with Cade Cunningham? And I think what you have to do is you have to break down the roster. And the first thing you have to say is, are there any other pieces that are indispensable? In other words, are there any other players on this team that you would be absolutely unwilling to, par or to separate from? So when we look at that, the list goes something like this. Cade Cunningham at the top. Yes, he is indispensable. We will not move on from him. He is the franchise key cornerstone right now of the Detroit Pistons. Who's the next player on that list? Is it Sadiq Bey? If it's Sadiq Bey, you have to ask yourself the question, are you willing to part with him for better talent? Would you be willing to give up Sadiq Bey if it meant that an all-star was coming back your way? I think most of us would. So you can't just say, uh, fit doesn't matter with Cade Cunningham, but you can say it doesn't matter as much with a guy like Sadiq Bay. What about Jeremy Grant? Well, yeah, it does matter. So for example, if you're going to draft Keegan Murray as a potential future Jeremy Grant replacement, which by the way, not a bad decision because I think he could be as good as Jeremy Grant in year one, year two, and then only get better. Um, then you also would say to yourself, well, they're probably going to trade Jeremy Grant because it doesn't make sense to have your first round lottery draft pick and Jeremy Grant sitting at the same position. I think that if Jay Nivey's available and Keegan Murray's available and Benedict Matherin's available, I think the Pistons have to think a little bit, just a little bit about fit. Of course they do. Cause you don't want to draft a guy just to sit the bench. And then you're sitting there and you're wondering, do we give Jeremy Grant an extension? Don't we give Jeremy Grant an extension? We have this guy waiting in the wings, but you need to get something for him. Here's what I'm saying. Fit matters, but flexibility matters more. So this, I, and I'll put out another video about this, I'm sure, as we get closer to the draft on what a perfect draft would look like for the Detroit Pistons. Then what a perfect draft to me would look like is draft Jaden Ivey at five, trade Portland, trade Jeremy Grant to Portland, get the seventh pick, and hopefully still get Keegan Murray. Like, And that is where you realize you're getting best talent available plus fit. I get frustrated when people say in the NBA, just draft talent. That's all that matters. Okay, I understand that talent is the most important thing, but there has to be a level of fit. The Sacramento Kings have drafted talent seemingly year after year. I know. I'm sorry, Kings fans. If you're watching, I make fun of the Kings a lot. They draft for talent over and over and over again. The fit doesn't work. The fit doesn't work. De'Aaron Fox, they draft Halliburton because they think he's the best talent. The fit didn't work. Um, they get Marvin Bagley. The fit didn't work. It doesn't mean he wasn't talented. He came to Detroit and had some really, really good success, but he didn't fit in Sacramento. And that's the other question I have to ask, even when now I'm tangenting on this video, when, if we want to re-sign Bagley, how much is he worth? And what does his fit look like? What does his fit look like if we draft a Keegan Murray? Where does he come? Is he coming off the bench at the four? Is he starting at the four? What does the spacing look like? You have to think about fit in terms of spacing, in terms of what does the offense look like overall? And what does the defense look like overall with this player in the mix? That's why when I'm looking at the draft board, there are guys that are higher on my draft board than others. Uh, Benedict Matherin is high on my draft board. He's probably number six, whereas on most draft boards, he's sitting at like nine. 
Um, Benedict Matherin's high on my draft board. Keegan Murray is high on my draft board because of his ability to fit anywhere. You know, I, I mean, like these are the guys that have to, you have to consider it. So I know I'm saying the same thing over and over again. I think I was just frustrated because all I've heard is talent, 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 talent. Don't worry about fit. Don't worry about fit. And I think that while talent might be 75% of the equation, if you don't worry about fit at all, you're going to have guys that are playing in a, and you, you, you have guys playing in a position where they are not set up for success. You need to set up your players for success. And I know you let the coaches worry about that and all those good things. But at the same time, the NBA is not like the NFL. There's not 22 starters. There are five. There are five starters, eight to 10 guys that regularly play through the rotation. You can't just get 10 pieces and then say, oh, they're all going to fit together. It is a limited number of resources. You have to choose wisely where you're drafting. Now, I do understand, and if you've watched my videos, my fatal flaw sometimes is that I go more for the high floor guys rather than the high ceiling guys. And that can be an issue of mine, and it's why it's a good thing I'm not the GM for the Detroit Pistons because I don't think I could ever pull the trigger on Shaden Sharp. We'll talk more about that, but I don't know how I could, at least at this point, just because of what I've seen, especially if Ivy's available. But the Detroit Pistons, Troy Weaver, clearly smarter than me, but I hope he's also smart enough to know you need to look at fit. If you disagree with me entirely, leave a comment. If you agree with me that fit has to at least be a consideration, I'm not saying it's the big thing. I'm just saying it's a consideration. Leave a comment below on that. Let me know you agree with me too. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with positive affirmation. But uh, hey, it's been a good video. If you like this channel, hit that subscribe button below. We love the community here at Sports Talk Detroit. We have a good thing going, good vibe going, uh, a lot of positivity here. Uh, so Come get on the bandwagon, Pistons, Lions, comment coming at you almost daily and uh, excited to see you on the next one.